the proposal to have data centres in Clare came up in 2018 at the Economic Policy Committee and it was considered the way to go, that that's where industry was going to be and there was a big drive to bring data centres to Ireland and I think local authorities were all vying for having the data centre in their area because it meant they could make money. And while I think our local authorities deserve money, it's not necessarily the best way to go just to have data centres all over the country. So in 2018 there was a consultation to amend the county development plan and to rezone some land. That happened, we were told it would be data centre. Some of us said yes, let's have data centre as long as it's renewable energy powering it. We didn't realise to the extent that they were going to be needing power and, and growing and, and at that stage we were looking into that. And then three years later we're proposed a massive power plant and a data centre beside it. So it's a completely different scenario to what we were sold at the start. Back then we had no idea what was actually physically proposed for the area. So that proposal has only come up in the last few months and the consultation on that has been absolutely abysmal. There was hardly any outreach and I don't think the people of Venice really know what's proposed on their back door. It's a power plant and I think that wasn't what we were sold in the first place and then when the planning permission came through it's a completely different thing to what we were talking about in 2018. This seems to be a new tactic is to build a power plant with the data centre. The energy regulator and AirGrid are both concerned about the use of energy from the grid for data centres so they're just bringing in their own power plants. If that's what they're going to be let to do every time they build a data centre, <laughs> you're just talking about increasing fossil fuel use. So the Ennis one is only one of 115 data centres that is either in use, being constructed or in planning at the moment in Ireland. They're stating in their planning application that they need 200 megawatts of power, that 80 would come from the grid, which would be 50% gas generated, the other 120 megawatts would be generated by fossil gas. They said that in the future it would be greener because they would be using hydrogen. But I've recently read that making hydrogen from fossil fuel, from gas, is 20% worse than gas itself because it's yet another process, so more methane leakage. The emissions stated in the planning application is 6,570,000 ,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. That makes it the 12th largest polluter in Ireland. Each of the six data centres that are proposed have 11 diesel backups for themselves. So we're looking at 66 diesel generators for the data centres and 18 backup or dual fuel generators for the gas power plant. People have made us aware of the emissions from the gas power plant. Locally, you would have nitrogen oxide carbon dioxide, huge amounts of methane and particulate matter. And the EPA have shown reports about power plants in Dublin and although they say that the levels are acceptable, it's questionable if the people around the power plants are safe. We're pushing it to the max with data centres for no real apparent benefit. We're not getting lots of tax for the state because of it. There's not loads of jobs once they're operation. There's a few for construction at the start. So it's not clear what the benefit is when the state is supposed to build all this infrastructure and new gas power plants and it's threatening blackouts for society. We're talking about trying to reduce our emissions 7% annually, but like in the last month, there's been an application for in a status center, which is going to increase it by 1% on our current emissions. There's the Shannon LNG gas proposal, which is another 1.6% of our gas emissions. So it's totally logical. We're going to have to challenge this concept of continual growth. There's 70 data centres operational in Ireland at the moment. That's 900 megawatts demand. There's another about 255 megawatts that's being built at the moment. Data centres, they're powered with electricity and that usually comes from either the grid or from on-site generation gas boilers and then back up diesel generators too, which would be turned on occasionally to make sure they're working. So this increase in data centres will automatically call for expanding our fossil fuel consumption. Gas Networks Ireland, they're projecting a 23% gas demand increase by the end of the decade. We can't do this and decrease our emissions 7% a year. It doesn't make sense. So we're very concerned that the energy that will be expected to be imported for the data centres in Ireland would be coming from Shannon LNG. We knew from the previous application that it was coming from Pennsylvania, so it would be fracked gas. 
Professor Robert Howarth from Cornell University in the United States told the Oireachtas Committee on Climate Change back in 2019 that the carbon footprint of fracked gas from the US would be 44% higher than burning coal in Money Point. So again, we're increasing emissions instead of decreasing them, but we keep being told that gas is cleaner and it's not. Ennis Data Centre, like a lot of the other data centres proposed in Ireland, has a huge gas plant attached because the grid can't provide the energy that's needed for these huge data centres. Because the one in Ennis, with a demand for 200 megawatts, is the equivalent of 210,000 houses. So that's like all the houses in Clare, Limerick and Kerry put together. They also want to make that strategic infrastructure so that it will be fast-tracked through on board Planola, just like the power plants are being done. So that means like the public has much less say and it's more difficult to appeal it and to challenge it in court. But they're saying that, yeah, we have to have this industry so that the economy can continue to grow. And they don't seem to see that it is having a massive impact on any kind of chance that we will become self-sufficient for energy via renewables. We have the rights under the Airhouse Convention to be informed of anything that will affect our environment and to be involved in the decision-making process. We were not given that right in 2018 and we're still not being given that right. We need to stop what we're doing on data centres. We need to go back to the people of Ireland and that's what we should be lobbying for. A national conversation on where we're going with data centres and what we want as a country to happen. It shouldn't be about industry running the show on this because it's such a headache for Airgrid and for the energy regulator that we should all be worried about where the politicians and the industries are leading us. So I think that people need to start campaigning on it in their local areas because at the moment a lot of the data centres are focused around Dublin but the policy seems to be to shift them out of their now very lately because it's causing such problems on the electrical grid around Dublin. I'd say get involved and if you're trying to argue against fossil fuel expansion you need to be arguing against data centre expansion you know. We saw with Covid that people resent when they see sectors not being dealt with equally and that's what we're seeing here. Big tech being given a total free ride while other sectors are going to be hammered in the near future. An idea that we're not all in this together when you see this kind of inequality. It's been allowed to happen with privacy, with, with big tech, and now they're being allowed to do it with demand as well, that they can just keep on increasing data and that there's no limits to the growth in data. We're going to have to start dealing with that. Maybe that's on an EU level or a global level. Ireland was fighting against coming together on a global tax policy. This all feeds into the same reasoning as why we've allowed the data centres to just expand and expand as they wish. It's this subservience to corporate power. We're going to have to deal with it or it's going to have big implications both for our emissions and in potential blackouts on the national grid. I've been studying data centres for maybe four or five years. Obviously they're getting a lot of attention at the moment because of the energy, but they are also very water intensive. And part of the reason why the climate of Ireland somewhat suits them is it's more temperate, so it, there's not fluctuations. For the water, it's pretty much all for cooling. And on average a data centre uses about 500,000 litres of water a day, but that can go up to 5 million. Obviously these figures are difficult because data centres are different in sizes, but in the same way that we talk about an average data centre's energy requirements. Something like the Shannon pipeline, which is this huge infrastructural project to bring water from the River Shannon up to the greater Dublin region. One of the things that they include in their estimates about future water needs is the needs of industry. Obviously Intel is a big operator in the greater Dublin region, energy and water requirements. But I think data centres are the other major industry that are going to require this water. So again, issues there are around if there are water shortages, if there are another hot summer, things are going to become more extreme. The data centres need more water because they need more cooling. But so does everyone else need more water. You know, farming, agriculture needs more water. People in their houses need more water. Vulnerable people need more water. And that is where, again, you have these contradictions over whose needs are met, should be prioritised. And it's only in times of infrastructural breakdown, like when there is a water shortage or if there is an energy blackout, that I think these issues are going to really come into the kind of public consciousness in a way that might mobilise people, like what happened with the water charges.
energy or water infrastructures are public. The infrastructure shouldn't be developed or orientated too much towards the needs of certain sectors, industry. This great fortune that we have in being a developed country in the global north, where we can take these things almost for granted, a right to water, a right to electricity. And I think that there's an understanding that the state has responsibility to look after those infrastructures as part of the public good. And when those things fail, citizens will be angry. And that anger will be directed at the current government. What value do we place on this expansion of data centres relative to our other economic activities? So, I mean, what do we do? Take more cars off the road, ration petrol, have deeper cuts in agriculture, deeper cuts in milk output, beef output. You know, th these are the kind of hard trade-offs we're now going to get into. We do need to build more electricity capacity because part of the strategy for decarbonising heating and transport is to electrify as much heating and transport as we can. But if at the same time we're adding additional electricity demand that is new energy use that we don't currently have at all at all, then that will inevitably mean that it will be much, much harder. Yes, absolutely, take action to ensure reliable electricity supply. But one of those actions would be to constrain or limit or even stop further data centre development. That will absolutely contribute to electricity security. It's not just the data centres. It's a political economy that revolves around foreign direct investment. If foreign direct investment is what the economic base relies on, then there are always going to be these contradictions where, you know, social and environmental burdens will be kind of allowed or justified because we need these industries, we need them to come here. But periodically, and I think it's the case with the data centres, it's causing conflict, it's causing opposition, it's bringing to the surface that there are these contradictions. And I think particularly in the context of climate change, maybe it will be something that really forces the hand of the government of the state to be like, OK, maybe we need to take a step back. I think what will happen is the data centres will be presented as a way for the rural regions to get investment and jobs. But beyond construction, there are not many jobs associated with data centres. I mean, a data centre is a big shed filled with servers. And those servers are managed for the most part algorithmically. That's the kind of sophistication of these infrastructures. And obviously that requires maintenance, but that maintenance isn't going to provide lots of jobs. And I'm even sceptical of the kind of figures that are put out there by the data centre industry representatives, IDA, you know, the figures that they use is maybe 30 to 40 permanent jobs per data center. That's not backed up by what I understand from, from talking to people in the industry or, you know, people who know more about how these things operate, because it's just not clear what those jobs would be for. And the other thing about those jobs is that if it is about maintenance for the most part, you could have an engineer or an operator managing multiple data centers. There is this myth that a constantly growing economy makes everything better. It doesn't. There's a huge amount of academic research that shows that beyond a certain level of affluence, further growth in economic activity does not make people happier. It doesn't lead to better health outcomes. It doesn't lead to better education outcomes. It doesn't lead to better happiness across society as a whole. So reprioritizing away from maximizing economic activity can be a positive thing for our societies as opposed to being viewed as giving things up in order to reduce energy use quickly enough on an emergency basis. We need to build a society that has cultural norms that value lifestyles that are low impact on the environment and on the planet more highly and that value societal cohesion, equity in society and education above economic activity just for the sheer sake of economic activity. We know that social media is addictive, it's designed to be addictive. It doesn't improve lifestyles. Inventing new addictions is not a way to improve our societies. And building out data centres just because that's economic activity and we think all economic activity is good without allowing for the negative externalities, things like addiction. We really need to take a more balanced view of those things and think about what's really important to us as a society. We're going to have a completely transformed society in 30 years anyway. The question is, do we manage our own path in an active way? Do we set out where we want to get to, what kind of society we want to have and build towards that? 
in a way that minimizes our impact and minimizes our contribution to these severe planetary scale problems that we now have? Or do we stick with what we have been doing, which is to prioritize sheer economic activity above all else and just assume that happiness will follow? Then we will be forced to change. You know, Ireland has its commitments under the Paris Climate Agreement, under EU policies to get 70% renewable energy on the grid by 2030 and to cut emissions. That is already a very difficult ask. It's going to require huge transformations in our energy generation, in our grid, and it's made a lot harder by the demand represented by data centres. So AirGrid's figures currently take up 11% of the grid. By 2030, it's estimated there'll be about 28% of the grid based on existing connections. Any way you cut it, these figures are all huge figures. They're huge drawdown on our grid. AirGrid have made it very clear that there might be brownouts or blackouts this winter. And so in that context, it doesn't seem like a huge ask to say that for the time being, given the critical situation we're in, in terms of energy security around moving towards renewable energy generation in the grid, and also get a better sense of what data centres bring to Ireland in terms of economic development, regional development jobs. All of those things are unclear. And on the basis of that, I think you know, having a moratorium, it makes sense. In 2019, Singapore introduced a moratorium in data centres, so two years later it's still in place. It hasn't led to the implosion of the Singaporean economy, it hasn't led to a drying up of investment, it hasn't led to a drying up of even relationships with the tech companies that want data centres. Tech companies are now being forced to work with the Singaporean government more directly to try to find solutions for problems that effectively they are causing. A t-shirt, Michal Martin gave his speech to the UN and he used this very significant platform to talk about climate change and climate action. And he had this you know, line which you know, then was circulated in the media about how we you know, globally are facing this climate abyss, which is not a weak word. And then to come back and to dismiss pretty much outright the need for a moratorium on data centers that are going to consume so much energy provide not a lot of employment. It really emphasizes the two-faced nature of the government and I would include in that the Greens particularly. I think it's really galling and I think that this issue really highlights that there is this huge gap between what needs to happen and what the government are willing to do. But in terms of actually taking effective action at this point, talking to your friends, talking to your neighbours, but contacting your local politicians, your councillors, your local government politicians, and your national politicians, your TDs, your senators, lifting the phone, sending an email, telling them you're concerned. That's the first thing. But then networking, there are various NGO groups, Active in Climate, the Stop Climate Chaos, Umbrella, and ask them, what can you do to help? It's campaigning, it's getting people on the street if necessary, to express themselves and politicians will listen to their constituents but only if their constituents are vocal. That will make a difference and is well worthwhile getting involved in those activities if you possibly can.